Sane and Sakti Yoga. And finally, we went to the place called Nishinga Pali. So there, we took darshan of Sri Nishinga Bhagavan in the form of this ancient, unmanifested, I mean, self manifested uh, deity of Lord Nishinga Dev. So whenever we go there, we always remember the beautiful narration in Srimad Bhagavatam of the story of Sri Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad Upakya, in which the great devotee Prahlad Maharaj, uh, who was the son of Hiranyakashipu, how he performed his pure devotional service to Krishna, and how uh, his father tried to kill him, and how Lord Nishrikadev, Sri Krishna himself, appeared to save his pure devotee. So this narration of this story is in the seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And there it is describing that uh, in the beginning of the creation, there were two demoniac brothers, Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. So one incarnation of the Supreme Lord, who is present on the auspicious altar of the Sri Keshaji Gaudiya, Lord Sri Varaha Dev, he killed one brother, uh, Hiranyaksha. And that battle is also described vividly in Srimad Bhagavatam. Then, Hiranyakashipu, the second brother, he wanted to get revenge. So, Hiranyakashipu, being a very materialistic person, he went to a mountain range, Mandara Mountain, and began to perform very severe austerities. And he was standing on the tips of his toes with his arms upraised. And this was in Satya Yuga, so they had a very long duration of life. So there he was performing these austerities for thousands of years. And he wanted ultimately, what was his aim and objective of performing such austerities? That he wanted to become immortal. That no one can kill him. So. As he was performing these austerities, he was becoming more and more powerful. And all the demigods in the heavenly planets, they approached Lord Brahma, and they requested him to come and to stop this demoniac person, Hiranyakashipu, from getting more and more powerful. So Lord Brahma came there. And when he came there, he was astonished, because this demon was so powerful that he had been standing in one place while he was standing there, ants came and they built an ant hill around him and they ate all the flesh on his body, so only the bones were there. And, but because it was such yuga and he was so powerful, he was able to keep his life airs, even just within the bones. So when Lord Brahma saw this from the air, coming on his swan carrier, he thought, just see how powerful is this demon. So then Lord Brahma came down and as he came down, he poured from his kamandalu some uh, water on the head of Hiranyakashipu's bones. And suddenly, Hiranyakashipu was benedicted with a very powerful, beautiful, and handsome new body. And then Hiranyakashipu, his austerity broke, he fell to the ground, paying obeisances to Lord Brahma. And now, Lord Brahma asked him, my dear Hiranyakashipu, what benediction do you want? And then Hiranyakashipu told Lord Brahma, I want to become immortal, that I will never be able to be killed, and I will never die in any way. Oh, then Lord Brahma told Hiranyakashipu, you are asking me for such a benediction, but this is not possible for me to give. Why? because even I myself am not immortal. So then Hiranyakashipu thought, because he thought that he was very intelligent, that this is the nature of the materialistic demons. They think that they are very intelligent, and by their materialistic science, by all of their theories, they can deny the existence of God. But God will ultimately come to them anyway in the form of death, no matter how apparently intelligent they are. So anyway, Hironi Kashipu thought, oh, then I will figure out a way that I can receive benedictions from Lord Brahma, and I will still become immortal. So then he asked Lord Brahma, Lord Brahma, then you please 
give you the benediction that I will not die in the daytime or in the nighttime. So then Lord Brahma said, very well, I give you that benediction. And then Hiranyakashipu said, give me the benediction that I will not die on the land, on the sea, or in the air. And then Lord Brahma told, that's very fair. I'll allow you to have this benediction. And now Hiranyakashipu calculated some more. He said, give me the benediction that I will not die by any weapon, man-made weapon. I said, very well. And also give me the benediction that I will not die by any creature who is created by you in this universe, neither man or animal or any other form or species. And then Lord Brahma said, very well, I give you these benedictions. So at that time, uh, when Hiranyakashipu received these benedictions from Lord Brahma, suddenly he, th he thought to himself, aha, now I have succeeded. There is no possibility that I can be killed in any way. And now he raised his arms in the air and he said, I am immortal! So then Lord Brahma looked at this demoniac person and he thought, we will see how immortal he is. So then Lord Brahma took leave and he flew away on his carrier, swan carrier. So Hiranya Kashipu, now feeling himself to be very powerful, very invulnerable, now he began to terrorize the whole universe. And he went to the heavenly planets, and all the demigods, they began fleeing away from him in fear, and they hid here and there. And even Lord Indra, he vacated his palace, he left his throne, and he fled away. So now, Hiranya Kashipu came, and he sat on the throne of Indra, the king of the heavenly planets. And there, Hiranya Kashipu took control of the functions of the universe. Even he took control of karma. He took control of the karma of the living entities. Because generally, if someone does bad, he does sins, what happens? He gets punished, he gets bad karma, and he suffers. But what Hiranya Kashipu did was he reversed the laws of karma, and he said, if someone does bad, they will get a good result. This is the nature of the de demons. So in Hiranyakashipu, now he came to the sort of planet, and he was created a big palace, and he became a powerful king. And Hiranyakashipu, while he was there doing those austerities, uh, this is prior to his conquering the universe, his wife was pregnant with his child. But during that time, because the demigods were so fearful, they took that child away. They took the mother uh, who was pregnant with the child in the womb, and they were carrying her away. They wanted to actually kill the child in the womb because they thought that he would be a powerful demon just like Hiranyakashipu was. But then, Lord Sri Narada Muni came and he stopped the demigods and said, no, 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 in the womb of this woman, is a very, very great devotee, a Maha Bhagwat. So, he, so then Narada Muni took the wife of Hiranyakashipu, Kayadu, and he took her to his ashram. And there he began to speak the narrations of Krishna Katha. Uh, and the child in the womb was hearing this powerful spiritual vibration. And he was associating with Narada Muni through the medium of sound. So, that little child within the womb, he turned out to be a very great devotee named Prahlad Maharaj, the son of Hirani Kashipu. And although he was born to a demon, but he was a very great pure devotee, even from his early childhood and birth. So, when Hirani Kashipu was uh, in, the, in his palace, one day, Hirani Kashipu wanted to ask his, new, his son who was only five years old at the time, he wanted to ask Prahlad that uh, he had now gone to school and he had been learning for the first time the various things that are taught to the children in school uh, and the materialistic uh, leaders of society, they teach so many topics to their children so that they can also become materialistic leaders. So Hiranyakashipu took Prahlad Maharaj on his lap 
And he wanted to hear from Pallad Maharaj, just like any father wants to hear from his child when he comes home from his first day of school. Oh, what did you learn in school today? So Hirani Kashipu asked this question from his child, Pallad Maharaj. Oh, Pallad, what is the best thing? Please tell me, what is the best thing that you have learned in school today? So now we will hear the, what Pallad Maharaj answered to his father from Shipat Damodar Maharaj. So Pallad Maharaj answered, O oh, Father, O oh, best of the demons. So Rani Kashmir became very happy because Pallad was always so polite. O oh, best of the demons, what I learned is that person who always meditates upon temporary things, he must always be in anxiety. Because when if we develop attachment for something and when it leaves us, then we'll have to suffer. There was such an attached materialist is like a person, Grihama and the Kupan, who lives in a very dark hole. Gurudev gives the example of one man, he was fleeing from a tiger and he fell into a hole. So as he was falling, he caught hold of one branch of the tree. So the branch of that tree was one beehive. So the the man looked up and the tiger was waiting to eat him. He looked down and there were some snakes ready to kill him. So death was above him, death was beneath him. In such a horrible situation, two mice, one black and one white, they began chewing the branch. So as the man was about to die, then some honey was falling from the beehive and he was tasting that honey and he forgot all about his suffering. The Guru says, that drop of honey, that is material sex life. The materialist, he works all day like a donkey. And when he comes home, then the wife loses his tongue and genital. And because of that five minutes of happiness, he forgets his unlimited misery. So Prahlad said, an intelligent person, such an intelligent person, they give up that dark well of material existence and take shelter of the forest, especially Vrindavan. So that time, Pallad Maharaj was only five years old. So Hirani Kasapu, he did not take it very seriously. He laughed and said, thus is the child spoiled by the enemy. Hirani Kasapu was thinking some Vaishnav must have come in disguise and taught maybe Pallad some Hari Bhakti. So Pallad, so Hirani Kasapu did not take it very much seriously at all. So he instructed Sandra Namaka, be very careful. Make sure that my son, his, pollute, his intelligence is not destroyed by the instructions of the Vaishnavas. So Sandra Namaka, they asked Prahlad, Oh Prahlad, where did you learn all these things? We did not teach you that. So Prahlad Maharaj answered, How I can say, I can say that like Vishnu is the supreme magnet, and my mind is like iron. How I am attracted to the feet of Vishnu, I must say this is spontaneous. No? So Prahlad, he went back to school. Sangamaka threatened him. You are like an axe. <clears throat> you are like a thorn tree in the forest of sandalwood of the dynasty of the demons. Just like a sandal, the thorn tree has a very strong wood. So Vishnu is the axe, and you are the handle of that axe to destroy the demon dynasty. So they threatened him with violence and many type of things. Prahlad, he was expert at cheating them. So he did not give up his instructions that he had learned from Nada. After Prahlad had stayed in school for some weeks, then again came the holidays. So his mother decorated him again. And again, he sat on the left lap of his father. And his father asked him again, Oh Prahlad, What's the best thing you learned at school? Economics, chemistry, physics. So Prahlad Maharaj answered, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pada, Sevanam, Ajanam, Varanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanam, Vedanam, Deepam, Sapita, Vishnu, Vantish, Chandra, Valachinam, Kriti, Bhagavati, Adam, Manati, Adam, Uttamam. So Prahlad explained the nine names of devotion. 
one who completely takes shelter of the two Vishnus, Visay Bhagavan, Sri Krishna, Asray Bhagavan, Gurudev. Under the shelter of Gurudev, who completely offers everything to Vishnu by performing the nine limbs of Bhakti, which we heard from Pujapat Rasananda, that person has complete knowledge. His knowledge is perfect. When Hirani Kasipu heard this, he became extremely angry. Therefore, he threatened, he asked his son, he threatened son of Marka, well, why are you teaching these things to my son? Son of Marka declined, we have not taught. Therefore, Hirani Kasipu became very angry and threatened Prahlad. You say that you have performed so many austerities, <coughs> but I have also performed austerities. Why my mind is not like yours? Then Prahlad answered. Matiya Krishna, Paratosvatova, Matiya Abhipate, Krihar Patana, Adanta Gobi, Visitanta Mishram, Puna Puris, Chavita, Chavinanam. O Father, one who has uncontrolled senses, those uncontrolled senses drag him towards a hellish situation. So such a person, his inclination, his mind, Matiya Krishna, Paratosvatova, his inclination cannot be awarded despite his own efforts, despite the efforts of others, or despite a combination of both. Like we see so many disciples, they don't control their mind and senses. Guru cannot help them, they cannot help themselves, and a combination of both also produces no result. So disciples should also be qualified, Guru should be qualified. When both are qualified, when both are like that, then the result of Krishna consciousness is awarded. Such a person, Puna Punas Chavita Chavinanam. Such a person is always chewing the chew. Just like our parents married, they had so much misery and suffering, but still they forced their children to marry. Their parents had so much misery raising a family, but still they forced their children to marry. Just like someone who chews sugar cane <coughs> and spits it out. That person who chews that chewed up sugar cane, he cannot get any taste out of it. So Guru Maharaj tells a history. There was one dog. That dog found a very dry bone. So that bone had no juice in it at all. So the dog was chewing the bone and he was cutting his lips. So the dog was sucking his own blood and thinking that is the juice of the bone. So meanwhile, especially in India, there were 30 or 40 other dogs that saw this guy has a bone, we don't have a bone. Therefore they began chasing that dog and biting him and pounding him. So the dog was crying. <laughs> and the other 50 dogs were chasing him, biting him and scratching him. So when the dog dropped the bone, then they left him and maybe he felt happy. Then another dog, he picked up the bone, he began running. And the other 30 dogs began chasing that guy. That means that 50 years old, one should renounce family life, no? And drop the bone and someone else can pick that up and run with that. So Prahlad gave these instructions. Now to be doing swa atta katami vishnu duro saya piya vahi rati maninas mandaya tanti eva vidiya mana tapi isti tanti iti vanta vadaha. O Father, those who do not understand that service to Vishnu is their own self-interest. When we serve Hari Guru Vaishnava, this is not for the benefit of Hari Guru Vaishnava. Hari Guru Vaishnava have everything. This is for our own benefit. There were people who cannot understand that service to Guru and service to Krishna is for our benefit. That person, Yabihir Atamaninas, such a person with deluded intelligence, they always take the, what is external they take to be very important, or they always take the external meaning of the scriptures. They're like a blind man led by other blind men, and both are bound by the strong ropes of material nature. Naisimati Stavadukami Sprisa Oh Father, because you have not taken the food dust of a pure distinction Vaishnav in your head, then you cannot be delivered from your unwanted desires. When Irani Kasipu heard this, he became very much angry and he ordered <coughs> his demonic servants, just like the finger is diseased, to save the hand you have to cut off the finger. In the same way, this child, even though he is my own son, he should be rejected, he should be killed. The demons tried many ways to kill Prahlad 
but they were not successful at all. They tried to throw him underneath the feet of elephants, they tried to feed him poison, they tried to chop him with weapons and threw snakes on him, but Prahlad, he is the guru of Smaranakya Bhakti. Prahlad, he never deviated from remembrance of the feet of Vishnu, even for a second. Never Krishna Rako Maloke, Krishna Mani Rakoke. Who Krishna wants to save, no one can kill him. And who Krishna wants to kill them, no one can save him, no. So Prahlad was protected in every way. Suddenly Amartya came and explained to Radhika's food. Oh Maharaj, he's like a green piece of bamboo. You can make him this way or that way. He's only young. So again, he was put in the school of Sanna Namaka and they taught him the four types of diplomacy. Danda, Ben, Sam and Dham. But Prahlad Maharaj, he was always transcendental to the instructions of his demonic Brahminical teachers. So one day Sanna Namaka went outside and they asked Prahlad, Oh Prahlad, you can please instruct the school students. So all the students began playing. Then Prahlad said, my dear boys, don't disturb. Come here. We can learn about Hari Bhajan. Kovana Macharat Prakrit Dhamman Bhagavatam One should begin Hari Bhajan from the age of five. And the boys said, why the age of five? We're not old and our teeth have fallen out and we have a cholesterol bag. And we can do Hari Bhajan. No need to do Hari Bhajan now. Then Prahlad explained, if you live a hundred years, fifty years, or probably more, you lose by sleep. The first ten years you lose by wearing nappies in childhood, ten years you lose in school, twenty years you lose in old age, only very few years are there for Hari Bhajan. Guru Susu Sayabhata Sarvabhata Panenacha Saruna Sarvabhata Namisa Arabhanenacha one should begin bhajan by completely offering everything to Guru, especially one's own self. Then Guru will give you how to perform. Guru will teach you Vaishnava etiquette, how to associate with the Vaishnavas and Iswara Arana Nenacha. And by the result of Sarisam, Vaishnava Sam, you can learn how to worship the Lord. The boys asked Prahlad, what's the easy way to worship the Lord? Then Prahlad began Hare Krishna. All the demons began chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. The boy's mad. He's mad. Get him a psychiatrist. 
Listen, where's your honey? You talk about honey. Listen, hard work, cheating, economic development. That is reality. Your Hari, this is a figment of your imagination. Father, he is the Lord of you and the Lord of me. He gives strength for everything. He is the ability in man. He is the source of your strength, my strength, and everyone's strength. <laughs> Do you believe this? You simple Bengali villagers, do you believe this? You people from all over the world, you're intelligent people. Do you believe this? No, 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 no. Where's your Hari? You show me your Hari. Where I come from, we say, seeing is believing, boy. Where is he? Is he in that pillar? Is he in the pillar pillar? I smack you. Father, he is all pervading. Maybe you can't see him because you need your glasses readjusted. <laughs> Father, those glasses won't help you. You cannot see him with material eyes. You need special vision. It's called Prema Bhakti. I can help you with that. Prema Bhakti. We cannot see the Lord by these material eyes. We can only see him with the vision of pure devotion, Father. Therefore, my Sri Hari, he is inside and outside of everything. He is in your heart, believe it or not. He is in my heart. He is everywhere. Boy, he's mad. Absolutely mad. Show me. Where is he? Where is he? Is he there? Is he there? Father, he is in that pillar. He is everywhere. Is he there? You Bengali people, you believe this boy? This crazy boy? Where is he? He's in this pillar. He's in this pillar. Look, I'm going to, before I smack you, I'm going to hit this pillar and show you, I'm going to crush the pillar. Then I'm going to crush you. I'm just going to take a walk for a few minutes. No, no, sit down, boy. Where? I am not serving you for any 
material recompense. Therefore, I feel very sad that you should ask such a thing. Therefore, please benedict me that I may have no material desires. I bless you that you will have no material desires. I don't have any already. <laughs> what is your second benediction? Oh Lord, my father must have given you unlimited suffering. Therefore, please liberate him and send him to the spiritual world by Gunta. I have already liberated your father. Seven generations forward and seven generations backward are all liberated. I thought it was 21. Okay. 21. If you're back, you're back. You're back. You're back. You're back. Your third benediction? I want the benediction, Lord. I'm not simply satisfied in my own liberation. All these fools and idiots, they have forgotten you. Therefore, please bless all of them that they may go back to your spiritual world and I will take all their sins and go to hell forever. You do not have to stay here in this material world. And still, I will liberate all living entities because of your desire. And Lord, I also want the benediction, anyone who hears this guitar then, they can go and be with you. Guitar's for you. The Shrinky Day of Disappearance Day,